in this screencast video lecture we will look at the introduction about the transport of nutrient there inside the bacterial cells microorganism generally resides in the environment which may contain more nutrient sometime it may be scarce also whatever may be the form in which it is present it need to be taken inside the cell so survival of the organism requires cells to transport the nutrient inside and sent out the waste material into the environment so whatever direction in which the transport is happening it need to pass on through the cell membrane which plays a specialized role there in the cell but most of the organisms including bacteria algae and fungi found to have a cell wall outside to the cell membrane it is not a highly selective one to screen the entrance and exit of the molecule thus for the survival and growth of the microorganism the nutrient need to be transported across the membrane and into the cell thus they need to export the waste also out of the cell transport across the cytoplasmic membrane is effected through various membrane spanning integral membrane proteins that have been embedded there in the cell membrane the transport across the cell membrane could be effected only for certain small molecules whereas highly complex and polymeric substances were also come across in the environment in which a bacteria or fungi is growing say for example look at this diagram a bacteria or fungi can able to grow in a litter containing environment that is in the leaf enriched environment wherein the carbon source is only cellulose okay oac refers to the carbon so it is referred as a cellulose so the organic debris are having a huge amount of cellulose but this cellulose sugar need to be digested and then only it can be made into simple sugar of glucose for that cells need to excrete enzyme these enzymes are actually transported across the cell membrane and they are reaching there into the extracellular environment where they act on the polymeric substance that is cellulose so the enzyme here involved is cellulase that in turn degrade the cellulose and convert the cellulose into monomeric glucose units that can be easily taken up by the cells that is enzyme help in hydrolyzing the complex form of the nutrient and the simple forms can be taken inside and used by the cells cellulose is converted into finally into glucose that can be easily transported inside and it can be metabolized by the cells this page shows the summary of transport process that could be operating in any kind of cells say this passive transport active transport or operational in all the group of living organism here what i have highlighted there in a dark blue color is a form of active transport which occurs only in the eukaryotic organism it is referred as a bulk transport that is mass transport of large particles cells and liquids by engulfment as well as the vesicle formation this form of transports includes the endocytosis exocytosis and pinocytosis which you, you may have already studied there in the cell biology course now we look at in an outline about the different kinds of transport process that are operating in the cells first one is a passive transport energy expenditure is not required that is energy in any form atp or a proton gradient may not be required there for the movement of the substance here substance exists in a gradient and move from areas of a high concentration towards the areas of low concentration examples of a passive transport includes diffusion it's also called as a passive diffusion a fundamental property of all atoms and molecule that exists in the state of a random motion and it's a non specific and brownian kind of a movement it can move in both the directions the next one is osmosis it's a diffusion of water molecule across a membrane barrier that is freely permeable to water but selectively permeable to the other molecules here the direction of the movement depends upon the osmolarity of the cell versus what is the osmolarity present there in the environment say this kind of a osmosis could be better effected under a hyperosmotic isotonic and hypotonic environment conditions sometimes these osmosis can also be effected by a carrier protein that may be embedded there in the membrane and that kind 
of a carrier protein that is involved in the water transport is referred as a aquapori. The next one is a facilitated diffusion. The simple diffusion is the first one what we have seen. Here it is a facilitated diffusion. The difference here is the same diffusion of the molecules occur but a carrier protein is involved here. That is a protein have been embedded in the membrane that is involved in the transport of the nutrient by diffusion. If you look at the description, here the molecules bind to a receptor in the membrane which is usually a protein and it is carried across to the other side of the membrane. This kind of a transport is molecule specific. A classical example of facilitated diffusion is a carrier protein mediated transport of the glucose molecule. You can look at here in the GIF image, you can able to see a glucose transporter have been embedded there in the membrane. It is involved in transport of glucose in both the directions. Now, we look at the points related to the active transport. For this energy is definitely required in the form of ATP or a proton gradient or energy rich substance such as a glucose 6-phosphate is required for the transport. Molecules need not need to exist there in a gradient for the transport to get accomplished. Here the rate of transport is usually increased compared to that of the other process and finally the transport may occur against the concentration gradient whereas in the passive transport it is towards the concentration gradient. Another important difference is the involvement of the carrier protein definitely in all the different kinds of active transport mechanism. In bacterial system, two types of active transports are dominating. One is a carrier mediated active transport. A very classical example here is the ABC transport system and the uniport, symport and antiport based transport of the nutrients. These are all example for carrier mediated active transport. Here atoms or molecules are pumped in or out of the cell by specialized receptor that is protein that have been embedded. Here energy is given in the form of ATP say in the ABC transport system that is here the ABC stands for ATP binding cassette proteins that have been involved there in the transport of the nutrient. Whereas the uniport, symport and antiport mechanisms are operative only when a proton gradient has been established there in the system. What are the molecules that have been transported? Collectively, it involves in the transport of simple sugars, amino acids, inorganic ions such as sodium and potassium. And final and important form of active transport that occurs in the cell is a group translocation. Molecules are moved across the membrane and simultaneously converted into metabolically useful substance. Here, the example what I have narrated earlier that is glucose can be converted into glucose phosphate after moving inside the cell system. This could be accomplished by the passport transferase system that is involved in the transport of the glucose inside the cell. It is generally referred as an alternative system for transport of nutrients especially sugars and amino acids. If we look at into the genome of the prokaryotic organism mainly bacteria and archaea 3 to 16 percentage of the open reading frames. Open reading frame is the one in which you can able to see a start codon followed by few codons that codes for an amino acid and finally a stop codon will be present. So such kind of the gene sequence are referred as the open reading frames. So here in a prokaryotic genome 3 to 16 percentage of the open reading frames will be coding only for the transport proteins. This says the importance of the membrane transport systems there in the cellular lifestyles of these organisms. This is again a schematic way of classification of the membrane transporters. All these kind of uh, transporters are using the facilitator proteins that is with the help of protein only the transport has been mediated. The class 1 refers to channel protein. Here only facilitator protein have been involved whereas no energy is used here. Glycerol and water are transported inside. Example includes the acoporin as well as the mechanosensitive channels that are involved in the water transport. And class 2 refers to secondary transport systems which mainly consumes the uniport, antiport and symport that are involved in the transport of various molecules with the help of 
proton and sodium as a gradient which gives the energy for the transport. And the third one refers to the primary active transport or primary transport in which the energy is supplied in the form of ATP and the nutrient is transported inside the cell. And the last class, it is also called as a class 4, is a group translocator. Here, the molecule that have been transported inside is chemically altered. Say, glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate. Here, the energy for this process have been mediated from some energy rich compounds that have been formed there through the operation of glycolysis. Say, for example, phosphoenol pyruvate, which serves as an energy donating compound. This energy is the one used for transport. Here, this group translocator is also referred as a secondary transport system of a cell. Now, we look at the definition for fermion. It refers to total complement of proteins that have been involved there in the membrane permeability, that is, transport process in a bacteria. Whereas, the term permeomics refers to an area of genomics in which the study will be conducted to find out the total complement of proteins involved in the membrane permeability, that is, with the transport of the nutrients there in an organism.